What's up guys, it's Chase from Chase's Workshop and in this video I'm going to be actually responding to a request from one of my subscribers about helping him build a tachometer for one of his lathes. Um, his name is Trian and he is, I hope I'm, say, hope I'm saying that, that that right buddy and I'm, I'm trying to pronounce your name right but anyways he sent me an email asking me to help him build a tachometer for his lathe. Uh, he sent me a parts list of the things that he has that he's bought to um, to use. I'm going to go over them right quick. Uh, the first one is a 49E Hall Effect Sensor, which is this guy right here. It's like a module Hall Effect Sensor. Uh, a nano board, which we all know the nano board guy there. And an I2C LCD screen. And this is basically just like the gas mirror that we built. Pretty much all the same parts, except a few. And he also sent a, uh, a step-down power converter. Now... I don't know if you guys know or not, but if you're using an Arduino, they accept voltages between from 7 to 14 volts. So if you're using the 12-volt power supply, you can plug straight into the VIN pin or the voltage in pin on the Arduino, and it will regulate that voltage down to what it needs. So you don't have to worry about that. Now, if you're using 24 volts, you will need to get a step-down converter or a buck converter or something like that to get the power down to uh, a workable range for the Arduino. Now, like I said, this unit or this that i'm building is the code is very similar actually i use the gas meter code to build this code so um the codes are very similar everything's basically the same so at one point in this video i'm going to get you to go back to that video and watch how to get the libraries and uh, the i2c scanner to where you can scan and make sure your i2c is communicating with your arduino board Actually, the first thing I want to do is I want to go through how to hook all these things up. So, guys, hope you enjoy the video. If you do, give me a like. If you like it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching. All right, guys, so here we are. I've got the Arduino out, and I'm going to go over hooking this guy up. Now, the first thing I want to hook up is this LCD screen. Very simple. It's got four uh, hookups on the back here. As you can see there, it's got ground, VCC, SDA, and SCL. Uh, SDA goes to pin number four, A4 right here, as you can see there, and uh, SCL goes to pin number five right here. So A4, A5 is SDA and SCL, SCL goes to pin A5, and SDA goes to pin A4. Now the rest of it, the VCC goes to five volts, which is right here and then to ground, which is right there. And this guy's hooked up, very simple, very easy to hook up. Um, now, this Hall Effect sensor here, if you look on it, if you can see this, you've got a VCC, a ground, a uh, VA out, and a D out. Now we're just gonna use the digital out, we're not using the analog out. So we're just using this one, this, this pin right here is not used. It's just stuck into the breadboard. Uh, VCC self-explanatory goes to 5 volts. Ground goes to ground. And then this D out right here on our board. I'm hoping you can see that. The D out. It's this green one and it goes to D2 right here. And that's our interrupt on our nano board is the D2 right there. Now one thing I found about this is this wire right here if it's too long this digital out if it's too long it sends interference and it totally messes the count up on this board um it basically doubled it i don't know if it's getting some bounce if you maybe you could put in a, a drop resistor right here to uh drop it or maybe you might could shield this uh digital out right here with another uh, maybe use uh, shielded cable or something like that to keep it from getting interference. But when this thing got longer than what it is now, it was giving me all kinds of wacky readings. I'd be running like uh, 120 RPMs and it, my, my screen would say I was running 1250. It was just re really wacky. Now, um, we're talking about the buck converter and all that stuff about converting this thing down. What I've got right here is I've got 12 volts coming into this uh, Arduino. All right, into this board right here, I've got 12 volts coming in. Um, this is my positive rail, and this is my negative rail. And what I've done here is, is I've taken the positive, and I've run it to the voltage end pin. 
and you see it says right there V I N right there voltage in we're not sending it to five volts we're sending it to our voltage in right here so uh, and then the ground is going to hook up to all of our other grounds and that's one thing that's very important anytime you're running um, an Arduino off of a power supply you need to make your grounds common and what I mean by that is, is if your grounds coming from um, your Hall effect sensor, your LCD screen, and your board all need to be connected to the same ground that's going to your power supply. If that makes sense. So we're going to hook it to the same point here. Um, the ground is going to go to our ground on our board right here. Okay. So we've got voltage in, which is our 12 volts coming in, and we've got ground right here, which is our ground. Now I'm going to plug this thing up and let you see uh, how it works. So that powered everything up. Now one thing that I haven't been able to do with this with this RPM gauge is, is have a real fast refresh rate. And what I mean by that is is that you know if you if you see like RPM in a car when it when you hit the gas it it just increases all the way up to um, to whatever you're at. So maybe it might read from uh, zero to and all the way up to a thousand and it would give you zero one two three four five six seven eight nine ten all the way up to a thousand whereas this one um, I, I haven't figured out how to make it refresh fast so basically what this does is is it reads uh, pulses from this uh, Hall effect sensor for uh, right at a second it multiplies that by 60 and then gives you a readout and that basically gives you your RPMs um, uh, for for that minute on that and that's how that's how I'm using this to make to make this work so like I said this refresh rate's not fast basically what that means is this guy's gonna blink and give you a readout um, but it's not gonna be it might go from 120 and then when it cuts off and comes back on it might say 240 uh, so it's not a not very fast refresh now that's pretty much it for hooking this thing up now and like I said just remember this uh, for some reason, if this is longer than what it is here, I get a bunch of weird readings on it. And um, that kind of uh, throw, throws it off to where it doesn't work right. So this, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the code on this thing. Um, and it's a lot like the gauss meter that I built. I don't know if you've seen that video or not. But um, I'm going to put a link back to that video here in a minute to, uh, to get your I2C uh, libraries and all that kind of stuff. So stand by. Okay, so what we've got here is first thing I want you to do is, is I'm gonna put a link right here and I'm gonna put a timestamp to another video where you can go and find how to get this I2C um, library and I2C scanner if you need help with that. If not, I'm gonna put a link to the spot to get it in the description. But if you don't know how to put that um, link, uh, how to put that into your library's folder and all that stuff, go to this other video, go to that timestamp, and it'll show you how to do all that stuff. Now, also too, I'm going to show you how to use the I2C scanner, which is the I2C is basically a backpack that this guy uses, and it's basically an address, and this is the address, this 0 by 27 right here. Um, some might have a different address. It might be 0 by 32. It could be anything. Um, more than likely, it is going to be 0 by 27, but if you're having troubles trying to get your um, LCD screen to uh, work with your Arduino, this might be the problem. You can find the I2C scanner in the other video, and you can um, it'll show you how to get this readout to where you can figure out what you need to input right here. Now, now that you're back from that, if you went to there, um, I'm just going to kind of skim through here right quick. I've just got a volatile integer set up, counter of equals zero, uh, and an integer of RPM, um, the serial begin, uh, attaching the interrupt to zero, count and rising. Um, the interrupter on the Nano is the digital two pin. And there might be another one on there too that you can use for that also, but um, digital two is uh, what it's set up automatically at. Um, we're beginning the LCD uh, 16 by 2. And what the 16 by 2, all it means is there's 16 of these characters here, and there's two spots. So if you count these, you're going to get 16, and you're going to get 2. All right, so that's done. Uh, the void loop. Now, this is where the actual workings happen. Uh, the first thing we're doing is delaying for a second. Um, we're going to serial print the counter times 60. Now serial print is this little guy right here. When you click on this, it's going to bring that up and it's going to basically give you a readout 
uh, of the serial monitor for the Arduino by itself without anything. Uh, and then it's going to print RPM after that point. So if I open this guy up, it's going to say that. It's going to give me the counter times 60 and it's going to say RPM next to it. Anything in these little quotes right here, it's going to print what you put here. If I write chase right here, it's going to write chase on the screen. All right, now we're going to come here to where we're talking about our integer that we set up here, the RPM. We've got RPM equals uh, counter times 60. And so basically all this thing's doing is, is every time that magnet passes that Hall effect sensor, it counts it and it multiplies it by 60 and gives you a reading of it. So it's a very simple, uh, very simple way to do it. Um, and that's another reason why it has a very slow refresh rate because it has to take the time to actually count and then multiply and all that stuff to do that. Um, so here we are, LCD, we're setting the cursor to 0-0. zero. Now all that means is, is that I'm setting the cursor right here, this digit right here. This is 0, 0, okay? Now uh, we're going to print RPM. Now remember, like I said, it's in quotes, so it's going to print the letters RPM. Okay, next I'm setting the cursor to 11-0. So we come back to here. We're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Right? So we're going to go to the 11th spot on the 0 right there. And we're going to print we're going to go to the 11th spot and we're going to at, at 0 and we're going to print RPM. Now since it's not in quotes, it's going to put what our integer right here, counter times 60. So it's actually going to print um, what our reading is. And then we set the cursor to 0, uh, comma 1. We come here, we go to 0. The comma is this one here. This is the row 0. This is row 1. So we're setting it to right here. And we're going to just print name. And you can put anything you want there. You can put your name. You can put um, whatever you want to put there. And then we're going to uh, set cursor to 11, 1. And I didn't put anything there, I just, um, but you can add anything you want to. Um, you can go in here and put 10 different things on here if you want to. You just got to keep copying this right here to whatever you want. Um, then we're going to delay for a second, and then we're going to clear the LCD screen. And then we got a counter equal to zero, uh, void count, counter plus plus. And that's basically just counting, um, it's adding the counts instead of just counting uh, one, 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 it's going to one, then goes to two, three, four, five. So very simple, very easy to do. And of course, if, any, if you have any questions about any of this stuff, just leave them in the link or send me an email or whatever you want to do. Okay, so the first thing I want to go over right here is I want to go over this LCD screen. Now, a lot of times when you first plug this thing up, if it's giving you a, uh, if you're not getting any picture on it, it could be because of this. As you can tell now, I don't have anything on the screen. But just slowly turn this guy up, I start getting a readout on there. Just make sure that this tensiometer isn't set too low that you're not getting a readout um, on your screen. That would be the first thing to check if you're having any issues with it. Now, what well, all I want to do here is just demonstrate how this thing works. And like I said in the code, this thing's basically just reading this magnet right here. I've got it set up on my Pickup Monitor 2.0. And when it comes on, it's just going to spin. And um, I'm going to put this... Hall effect sensor right here where, get it, where it, it can read that magnet every time it passes by. So very simple, not much to this guy at all. Let me get this where you can see it, hopefully. I had to dim my lights down on my, on my camera so you could see this. And as you can tell there, we got it 420 by 4600. Eleven forty, eleven eighty. It's keeping up with uh, the pickup monitor. You can't see this readout right here, but I'll show you in a minute. I'll move this around where you can see it. I'm go fastest go. This thing goes by eighteen sixties with this the fastest. This uh, well, it went to nineteen twenty there, but it's keeping up exactly with the pickup monitor. 
Now as you can tell what I was talking about with the refresh rate on this guy, where if I slow it down real fast, it's going to take it a minute to catch up. See, there's 480. 540. Hope that makes sense. Now, as you can also see here too, there's a little LED that flashes every time that magnet passes that sensor. Now what I want to do is, is I want to show you right quick something that I found out on this guy. As you can tell, um, that light right there, sometimes, see how this side of the magnet works with it? But this side does not trigger it. So this Hall effect sensor has a polarity. So as you can tell, the side that didn't work on the front works on the back. But it doesn't work right here. So you might be having that issue where when you're trying to... Um, I hope that makes sense what I'm trying to say here. As you can see, there's a little LED light right here. Now when the magnet goes in front of it... The magnet goes in front of it. You get a... lights up. Now if I flip it over to the other polarity, it doesn't. See there? So this thing is does have a polarity. See, it's basically reading either side of the magnet. So if I take this side that is reading, this side is not. But if I flip it around to that side, it works. But it's working from the back side. So just take that memory of that, that if you're trying to read it and you're not, it's not reading, it's not picking up, make sure your magnet's in the right orientation, right polarity to, to engage that switch. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I just want to kind of show it along with uh, my pickup winder so you can kind of see how it's uh, keeping up, how they're basically staying the same. So we've got 540, 600, 600. Now the fastest is this or this uh, pickup monitor will go is uh, right at 1920. I think that's what it was at. It's the hot, fastest I've gotten to go. I'm getting a reading. Yep, there it is, right there. Um, this thing I don't have seen any problem with it doing at least 2,500 to 3,000 RPMs on this Hall Effect sensor. It might even do faster than that, but it works really well. Well, there you go, guys. If you have any questions or comments about anything on here, just let me know. I'll be glad to uh, explain anything to you and um, uh, help you out as much as I can on any of this stuff. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a like. And if you liked it, please subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys.